Hi, my name is Mani Ali Khani. I am the Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. The subject of today's discussion is Newton's Law. Isaac Newton, about 200 years ago or more, discovered three principles that changed the physics forever. These principles become the foundation of mechanics. Today, we use these principles heavily in understanding the biomechanics. The first law of Newton is a law of inertia. Based on this law, if object is at rest or moving in a straight line in a constant velocity, will stay in that position forever unless a force is applied and disturb that position. This law can be used to understand equilibrium. That is the subject of the next discussion. The second law of Newton is a law of acceleration. Based on this law, if we apply a force to object that we disturb the balance of the object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the force and this acceleration directly is related to the amount of the force and inversely related to the mass of the object. The larger the mass, the slower acceleration. The smaller the mass, the faster acceleration. This law can define the unit of the force for us. In orthodontics, we use two units to define the force, either Newton or gram force. One Newton is almost the weight of the apple, 100, 102 gram force. Therefore, 10 Newton is equal to one kilogram force. In orthodontics, because we usually use lighter forces, we, instead of say one Newton, we say 100 centinewton. So we divide it to the 100 part. And we usually around 25 centinewton, 50 centinewton, 100 centinewton, sometimes even more, 150 centinewton force we apply. But usually our forces are light. Uh, be careful, don't use the unit of the mass as a source for the force. You cannot say I apply 100 gram. That's for mass, not for the force. You should say 100 gram force or 100 centinewton. So we do not use the unit of the mass in orthodontics. The third law of Newton is law of action and reaction. I think majority of the people are familiar with this law. Based on this law, if you apply a force or action, the object that you apply the force to will apply a opposite an equal force back and that's a reaction. Assume there is a book on the table. Uh, the weight of the book applies a force on the table. That would be the action. And the table will produce an opposite force to the book. That would be the reaction. But what about the objects in motion? Assume we have a carriage and we have a horse. The horse pulls the carriage and the carriage applies the opposite force equal. Remember, these forces are applied to different objects, so they don't cancel each other. If they would cancel each other, there would be no movement. However, the carriage is moving and horse pulling the carriage forward. Because the force that is applied to the carriage is different from the force that is applied to the horse. They are not balancing each other. They are not canceling each other. In orthodontics, we have the same. If we apply a force between the two central, they move toward each other. Even though the forces are equal and opposite direction, they don't cancel each other. They are not in balance with each other. If they were in balance, there would be no movement. Is the size of the objects is important in this action and reaction forces. For example, if a swimmer pushed the wall of the pool to move forward. She applies a force to the wall, wall applies opposite force to the swimmer. 
the amount of the force that the wall applies to the swimmer because the swimmer has a smaller mass allows the swimmer to go fast forward but the force that is applied to the wall because the wall is big cannot move the wall even though the forces are equal so the mass of the object does not change the action and reaction forces they are equal and opposite how they react it depends on their mass this causes a lot of confusion in orthodontics so when we are applying a force from the molar to premolar molar has a large mass it moves slower than the premolar that has a smaller mass even though always the action and reaction are the same what do you think would it be different if i apply a force between the molar and premolar or molar and all anterior teeth together do you think the molar receive different force or react differently no action and reaction is independent of the mass of the object how the mass react is the behavior of that object if you are pushing the molar against the premolar he will receive the same action and reaction forces whether you have one premolar or you have all the anterior teeth against it. I hope you enjoyed this session and you find this session useful. The topic for the next discussion is equilibrium. If so far you have not subscribed to our channel, please support us by subscribing to our channel. Thank you for listening to another session of Zitor channel.